some of the examples of information leakages. Example number one is when information is shared with customer or vendors and is lost either intentionally or unintentionally to a competitor. So you could have a vendor of yours like a subcontractor and he could in the process of making the document leak it out to a competitor resulting in a lot of intellectual property loss. Case two, you could have an employee of the company leaving you and joining a competitor and when he joins the competitor, he takes all the intellectual property of the company and gives it to the competitor. These are some of the examples of data leakages. And this is the problem that information rights management is trying to solve. Let's now see, let's look at a better approach, which is information rights management. So now in IRM, what we do is we do not restrict the sender from sending information, but at the receiver side, when the receiver tries to perform certain activities, we check at the receiver side, whether he is the right person, whether he is performing the right action, whether he's doing it at the right time and from the right location. So with these checks, we ensure that only the correct receiver is opening the documents. As you can see, this approach increases security as well as collaboration that one can put on design documents. So the first IRM policy that you can put is who, meaning who are the people who can access the documents. So you can either define users or you can define groups of users who can access the document. The second is what, meaning what can each person do with the document? For example, can they read it? Can they edit it? Can they print it? Can they forward it? All of this can be controlled. Third is when, which is the time-based restriction where you can control or give specific dates to the document such that the document opens only after a predefined time and closes or does not open after a predefined time. And the last one is where, which is the location based restriction, where you can either restrict a document to a computer or a network of computers. Let's take a simple example or a scenario of research reports and drawings. So as you can see, there are two users, Jim and Tim, to whom the AutoCAD drawing is going to be sent. Now Jim has only read access on the document, whereas Tim has read and edit rights on the document. So if now Tim tries to print a document, he will not be able to print it because he does not have access to print the document. Similarly, if Tim forwards a document, the recipient will not be able to use that document or open that document. And after the 30th of November, Jim's access on the document will automatically get removed. So this in brief is how information rights management technology works. It's basically defining policies on a document such that receivers have only restricted rights on the document. Now let's come to the salient features of IRM. First and foremost is the dynamic feature of IRM where policies can be changed without having access to or redistributing the information. For example, let's take this case where company wants to delete some document that he has sent to the subcontractor. Now all that he needs to do is press a button on his computer and automatically the documents can be deleted from the subcontractor's computer. So this is the power of IRM. In other words, it's actually like a remote control which you can use to control the documents on the recipient side. Second, the policies are persistent, which means once a document is protected, you can send the document either through a pen drive or internet or email or CD. It does not matter really how you send it because once a document is protected, the protection goes along with the document. 
and last but not the least monitoring system where all activities that the receiver does authorized and unauthorized are logged and tracked so every activity like viewing editing printing of the receiver would be logged and tracked along with the date time name of the computer mac address of the computer etc now let, let's now protecting an autocad document and the first thing that we do is IOM log in as maya in maya is the user who's going to protect a document and send it to two other receivers so as you can see this is maya's computer let's open a document that maya has prepared and see what is in the document So Maya opens the AutoCAD design drawing. And as you can see, this is a floor layout plan of a particular floor space. Now I'm going to close this document and then protect it. For protection, what I'm going to do is open up Outlook. And I'm going to compose a new mail. So I'm going to send it to two users. So Neil is one of the users to whom I'm going to send this AutoCAD drawing. And the second user is Eric. I type in the subject of the email. And then I am going to compose the email. So I say, hi, Neil, Eric, this is confidential information for your use only. And now I'm going to attach that AutoCAD design drawing. Now what I'm going to do is click on Secure Send. And as soon as I click on Secure Send, the browser opens up where I define permissions for Neil and Eric. So as you can see in the Who list, Neil and Eric have already been automatically added to the list. The second thing that I do is define what, meaning what can these users do with the document. So let's say that Neil can only view it, whereas Eric can view and print it. And if you go to advanced, you have more options like you can put time based restrictions. So say for Eric, what we do is we say that he can access the document, not from today, but from tomorrow, which is the 15th. And we also give him an end date, say we say that he can access it only for a week's time. Once we do that, there's one more option that we can put in, which is a location based restriction where you can either restrict it opening of a document to a particular computer or you can restrict it network of computers like your office network. Now, once I do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on done and see what happens. So now, as you can see, the email attachment along with the email gets protected with the IRM policy that has been applied and gets mailed out to the two receivers. Opening of a protected AutoCAD document. So now what we're going to do is log in as the first receiver who is Neil and see what happens when Neil tries to open the protected drawing. So we, this is Neil's computer. So we're going to open Outlook, get the email. So Neil has received the email. We'll click on the email. So as you can see, the entire email is protected. Even the email content is protected with the IRM policy. We have, what we are going to do now is we are going to open the protected document. So we will save it first to the desktop. So when Neil opens the document, the system automatically authenticates him and then shows the policy that Neil has on the document. So as you can see, Neil has only view and print screen rights. So you click on OK and the document opens in the restrictive access that Neil has. So now if we try to edit the document, so say we make a line. And 
and close it. Now, when Neil tries to save the document, you will see that he is not allowed to save it. So it says you cannot access this command. Similarly, if Neil tries to print it, again, it doesn't allow him to plot the drawing. It says that Neil cannot access this command. So as you can see, Neil can only view this document. We will now log in as a second receiver who is Eric and see what happens when Eric tries to open the document. So we again open Outlook. This is Eric's computer. We get the new mail. As you can see, even Eric has received the mail. We are going to save the attachment once again to the desktop and then open it. So Neil tries to open the document. The system authenticates him and says that he is not allowed to open the file. This is because if you remember, we had given Neil permission to access the document from tomorrow. Changing of IRM policy. Let's take the case where Eric tells Maya that he needs to access the document from today itself. So what we are going to do is log in as Maya and Maya is going to change the permission of Eric on that document. So as you can see, this is Maya's computer. We are going to change the policy now on the document such that Eric can access the document from today. So we open it. We click on the policy that has been applied to the document. And as you can see, we have given Eric right from tomorrow. So we change it to today. And then we click on save. Now what we are going to do is log in to Eric's computer and see if Eric can now open the document. So as you can see, this is Eric's computer and he opens the AutoCAD drawing and when he opens it, you should see that Eric has, is now able to open the document. So Eric has view and print rights on the document. Click on OK and the document now opens. Now if Eric clicks on print, he should be able to print the document. Audit tray because the audit tray has is accessible rights. to the protector of the document, which is Maya in this case and the system administrator. So what we are going to do now is log in as Maya and access the documents audit tray. So I go and say view activity log. And what you should see is the complete activities that have happened on the document. So it, this system will completely tell you what has happened on the document. For example, Neil tried to view the document. It also gives you the date and the time when the activity was performed. And if you want even more details, it will also tell you what time, which computer, which location, what was the computer's MAC address. Pretty much everything that has happened on the document will be told to the sender. This audit trail not only helps you to comply with a lot of regulatory and compliance norms, but more importantly, it helps you to do any kind of forensics that you need to do in case there is any kind of data breach happening in the audit.